Yo, Parish Orphans and Retrogrades, happy Saturday. We don't always come to you with an episode of Rules for Retrogrades on Saturday, late mornings, early afternoons, depending on where you are. The reason that we sometimes do is because weekend topics are special topics. Weekend time is special time. And so whether or not it's a special kind of educational show or a special kind of recreational show, that's what we try to set aside for this time because we understand your weekend time is valuable. Today's a bit of both. And joining me besides the lovely Steph. Hello, everybody. <laughs> is also um, a couple that, well, hello, everybody. <laughs> is a couple that we became friends with since relocating to the deep south here through the show. And this is actually not, people will tell you, it's, it's not the most frequent thing in the world. We don't necessarily start hanging out on weekends with everybody that reaches out but we we did hit it off with this young couple and they reached out to us just because they'd seen our material and and found it useful and so they initially reached out to us as um i think points of clarification so this is jordan and scarlet what's up jordan and scarlet hey tim what's up it's always weird saying hi when like we were just talking like before recording, but this is good. <laughs> so phony. It's so funny. That's the thing about podcasts. Half the time you chat with someone for a half hour and you're in a deep conversation. You're like, oh, this is this is good. This is good. Let's use that. And you start sounding like a director. You're like, OK, <laughs> we, we should have had this on camera. And then you go and you hit play and you're both like, hello. And yeah. it's all Fancy wooden meeting and you here. Yeah, right, but, but right, aside right. from the introduction, you're like wooden and awkward, yeah. and you can't get into the the deep spot. That that's a famous problem with with streaming. Um, no, no it, it's always. Like, what's up, Jordan? No, we're really uh, grateful to be on. Like you said, we met through the show, and we're really, really big fans. So very grateful and very excited to be on today to talk about marriage. Yeah, and so you guys like like almost <laughs> all of our friends are in your young young to mid 20s which yeah. is a funny thing because so many of Steph's and my close friends are my ex-students who are now married and you you know you grew up in the south but mm -hmm. you're you're the same age as a lot of the people that you've met over at, at my place or or Nick you know everyone's like 25 and, and Scarlett you're a little bit a tiny bit younger but yeah it I don't know. Would you say in opening, just in either of you, I'd, I'd love to hear from Scarlett on this, but but either one of you. We've been having this whole red pill thing. Jordan, you and I text about it almost every day. But, mm -hmm. you know, the pushback against feminism is getting off on the wrong foot. And that seems to be by design, seems to be part of the containment valve in place by feminism. To, to, to ensure that you'll always have feminism. If you have red pill as the solution, a false solution, you're always going to have feminism. So can you just say from a, a position that's consonant with ours, what, what are the real difficulties on like young people out there, people that are even younger than you, you know, because you you also um, mm -hmm. work with young people. Yeah. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. You know, have we misdiagnosed the problem or are people really struggling with marriage because of feminism? For sure. Yeah. No, it, it definitely is feminism. I think the the big issue is finding someone who shares values, you know, and, and in a way, not just Catholic values, but like, I mean, they are they are deeply Catholic values in terms of submission and uh, obedience and all this, but just in terms of someone who who shares those values and isn't weird, like, that's the only way I can word it. You know, not not a very sophisticated way to word it, but I think that's the 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 big issue. Yeah, um, I agree with you. I I want to say too is uh, yeah, definitely the values. A lot of people are not married, mm -hmm. so a lot of women or girls they look into the world instead of looking into their father or their mm -hmm. you know the relationship to the father and daughter or marriage so they just go out looking for it in the world and thinking that's that's the way to life that's yeah. the way that's how people are going to love me and also their parents are screwed up as yeah well. so it's like, <laughs> not gonna look up to yeah. go to the world and mm -hmm. see that they're there it looks like they're having fun 
Well, that's part of our story is the fact that we found you guys, yeah. right? Like you guys made marriage look fun in that mm-hmm. one uh, episode that you spoke about in the one, the 50 K show, right? The nine secrets to Catholic marriage. There's, there's even a point in the show team where you catch yourself and you're like, you see how marriage is starting to sound more fun for the males out there. And I'm like, yeah, this is actually sounds good because in a lot of circles, even, even in Catholic circles, marriage just sounds like a death, right? Death to self always, you know? And it's like, like, yeah, like there definitely is some of that, but it, it can also, and it has to be fun. Go back to what you said for a second. I want to talk about that particular episode of Rules for Retrogrades because you've put it large on my screen again, and I'm going to, I'm, I want to give you two credit for really giving us good feedback on the show. It will end up being very, very determinative feedback on that particular episode yeah. called uh, Nine Secrets of Catholic Marriage. But, but go back to what you two just said in different words about weird there there's um a false hegelian dialectic that's been established whereby scarlet said well no one no one's really seeing the correct christian model of marriage in their parents um in in these generations sorry uh, I, and when i say no one i mean 99% no one not 100.0 no one is seeing it in their friends mm-hmm. And all they're seeing modeled on the kind of Judeo-Buddhism in music and movies has been crafted to ensure that they'll never see a sexy, fun, non-weirdo marriage. Is Mm -hmm. that an overstatement for starters? So true. You see it on TV shows, the dad always being, you know, and the mom always being the smart one. Mm -hmm. You see that everywhere now. Yeah. Was it like a, always? you had a, a section in case of patriarchy about NBA commercials and like, I can't watch the NBA without like thinking about the commercials every time they're on. I'm like, man, like we can't find one where like the man is a leader. I mean, we spoke about this many times and, and it's been a big theme on your show, but you talk about the Tide commercials and all this as well. Like there's just not, it's just not out there. Yeah. A dude doing laundry where, <laughs> where he's, he like knows the foibles, the challenges, the, the, the unique occasional difficulties of laundry because he's doing so much laundry the ins and the outs, the ins yeah, and yeah. The outs of the laundering world right yeah, and yeah. he'll like look at the screen he's like you know what i mean boys but he's not even, <laughs> he's supposed to be like a straight man washing right. boys with darks boys yeah. <laughs> so yeah so you, you, okay people understand i think mm-hmm. that music movies tv this is run by non-christians let's right. say who who seem to delight and seem to operate in confounding christians what i've offered lately is that and they've been doing this since the 50s, 40s 50s 60s yeah. um sometime in there earlier than people acknowledge in the late 60s i don't That's know exactly fair. when but what i've been saying lately is Wow, the red pill, which I used to give more credit to. At the time, I was actually reading, sorry, writing Case for Patriarchy. I thought, okay, the red pill movement has a lot that's good. I still think their diagnosis of problems is is pretty good. But I didn't think that they were opposition controlled. Because, I mean, all you see with them is opposition to marriage too. Uh, Opposition to marriage by giving purchase the notion that marriage is the death of fun, the death of true intimacy. And the main thing is the, the Daphne Moon complex, whereas pre-marriage is sexy, sexual. You have lots of sex before marriage. The woman isn't acting like a brat. The woman acts romantic, yeah. right? That's the Daphne um, uh, Beasley Moon oh, complex, Moon Beasley complex. She wants to get the male's attention and wants to, him to like her and to commit to her. So she's not acting atrociously. It's yeah, only she's, after marriage she acts she's like a complete brat. She's feminine. Yeah. <laughs> Feminine. That's the word. And and afterwards, um, all fun, all masculinity on the male's part, all femininity on the female's part, all complementarity, all draw, because males and females are attracted to each other. Fundamental rule of human nature. Mm-hmm. Man, we're attracted to each other. Unless something gets in the way. That's all dead for the red pill, mm-hmm. for the Catholic feminists out there who are is a huge swath. It's I'd say most Catholics, most trads, most Novas Ordo, they're all Catholic feminists, whether they know it or not, for the left feminists, for secularists who are feminist, there's no one out there saying marriage should be fun. Marriage should be sexy. Is that that's not our false diagnosis or exaggeration, is it? 
no you you guys were the only ones that like made it seem that way you know and well I, like i have i have uh people in my life who people would look and be like oh they have a good marriage i'm like you know it's it's solid but it doesn't necessarily look fun like you don't mind me saying like we were at y'all's house a couple times and just we you could feel the fun in the house and it's not like we really like went out and hit hit the square or anything it was just hanging out at the house like you know we're just laughing having a good time and that's what it's supposed to be so you got you guys made it seem that way so that's why that's a large reason why i pursued scarlet like we were dating for six months when that video came out Mm -hmm. and then you know just i was i was a practicing catholic but i was like you know we'll just see where this goes but that video made me really think okay no this this has an end and the end is fun (laughs) so let's make it happen would yeah, would you mind telling us a little bit about that? So you saw the video, you'd been dating. Just tell us a little, if whatever you're comfortable telling us, yeah. Scarlett and Jordan, we're not saying last names here, about your courtship and how you met, because everyone mm-hmm. likes to hear that. And then and whatever's relevant in particular, but also then what what kind of inflection point was the six-month point? But it doesn't all have to center around like, our books or whatever in, in ways that that isn't true. Just just tell us a little bit about Scarlet and Can Jordan. I say too, real just real fast on the mm-hmm. fun point? There's a lot of freedom. How you achieve that, by the way, fun and enjoyment in marriage. It's really just the man doing what the man's supposed to do and the woman doing what the woman's supposed to do. If you just let go of all this modern bull crap of uh, role swapping and you just really embrace how God created us for our sex and our specific yeah. duties. There's a lot of freedom and joy in that alone. And that just allows you to just do what you're created to do and cut all the fat off of everything else. Like so, it gets you in the fun zone. You get in the fun zone. <laughs> sorry. Get her own fun boys. There's yeah. so much. Sorry. Yeah, laughter. sorry. The Jordan and Scarlet story. No, but before we get into that, I just want to say like laughter is so important, you know? Like making sure that that you that you keep each other laughing and even even uh, I think Will Nolan makes a point about that on his Twitter. Like you know, make make your wife laugh. Like it's it's important. People take I think people might take marriage. It's a serious topic, but people take it too seriously. That's right. But so you know, we met. Uh, so we met at the quince quinceanera, which is the most Hispanic story ever. Um, <laughs> it doesn't get any more. <laughs> yeah. I think the Mexicanity coefficient of that is like eleven. Yeah. Which it's is ridiculous. Like sombreros. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we were both like wearing a... ponchos and sombreros. Yeah. You rode in on a burro. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No. So yeah, and then like two weeks later, COVID nineteen hits, so everything gets shut down. So we like I made her my like I asked her to be like official girlfriend March twelfth, twenty twenty. So like that's the day that like shit hit the fan and then started dating from there. And then, yeah, like we, I was Catholic, practicing Catholic. She was not. I was that type Catholic, but I wasn't practicing. Mm-hmm. I was very confused about Catholicism. I would call myself a Protestant, like conscious and everything. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah. I was like, <laughs> she was, you were a feminist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was very yeah. like, yeah, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> well, and then. So Everyone the- was. Everyone was. Whether they knew it or not, whether it was a 10 or a 7 on the scale, until you get out of the matrix, everybody believes in the matrix. Yeah. Well, the video comes out, right? And <laughs> she's embarrassed, but the video comes out and I and I show her the video. We're six months dating. Right? I'm like, look at this. Like, doesn't this marriage seem like seem fun? Doesn't this look exciting? Right. And what was what was this feminist reaction? What was your reaction? I just want you watching. <laughs> like, that's so bad. Like, I was like, he he is controlling her. Yeah, he was like, <laughs> he was trying to tell me what to do. Like, hey, stop watching him. And and I think this was, again. So we talk about like things that that attract yeah. men, women to men. Like, I told her no. Like, no, I'm not gonna yeah. stop watching it. You know, like I I really I really enjoy his content. And I think you respected. Yeah, I respected it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were like, like, no, it. I'm not going to stop. And and you should watch this or, or something like that <laughs> well it was it was no i'm not gonna stop and this is the goal that i want to reach and you know and i mean i'm not gonna say that okay right away she she like turned it around but you know we worked on it we worked on it and now we're at a much much better yeah. place like those those nine rules have been really helpful and we don't like i, I did want to say this we're not perfect at following them you know people who know us like we have a, a really really good marriage but it's not a perfect marriage by any mean 
And sometimes like every couple months we rewatch the episode to make sure we you kind of oh. yeah, like like course correct or whatever. But I would say we have a better marriage than oh, a lot of people. <laughs> to be honest, yeah.